let's take some time and talk about something that I call peak habitat. Now this is a term I just made up, but instead of explaining what I mean by peak habitat every time, I just want to define what that is and then use the term peak habitat going forward. So every time I mention peak habitat, you know what I'm talking about. So peak habitat is really kind of a, a group of three different concepts. One is your cover, your timber, maybe your open ground if it's in cover, let's say switchgrass or CRP ground. And it's whenever that cover ground, whether it's wooded or again, native warm season grasses, maybe it's CRP, whenever that part of your farm is at its peak or its highest level of attraction and holding deer, that's, that's what I would call peak habitat for that segment of your farm. The second segment is your food plots or your agriculture ground. When does that part of your farm or part of your hunting grounds have its peak attraction and holding power for deer? Maybe early season that's alfalfa fields or a green food plot. Maybe late season that's standing corn or standing beans. So whatever you have for those type of food sources and where they peak for attractiveness and holding power, that would be that part of your farm's peak habitat. The third part of it is when is the combination of your security cover and your food source and the lowest level of hunting pressure at its peak. So in other words, when does your hunting pressure on your farm low enough so that the other parts of your habitat are successful in attracting and holding deer on your property? So when you combine all three, so they might peak at different times throughout the season, but when they together are at their peak, that's what I would call peak habitat. And the reason why I think it's important to talk about peak habitat is because there's a ton of noise out there about different habitat improvements for your farm. There's things like, what kind of food plots should I plant? Should I plant clover, alfalfa, brassicas, oats, winter rye, winter wheat, different blends, so green type food plots. Should I plant soybeans? Should I plant corn? What kind of combination should I plant with those food plots? And again, you need to look at when those food plots are gonna peak in attractiveness to the deer you're hunting. So let's talk about the security cover or the timber part of your hunting grounds. There's a lot of stuff out there about creating an oak savanna. So, in other words, we selectively cut out non-oak species, maybe it's ironwood, maybe it's maple, elm or ash, and we even selectively cut some oak so that we have spaces between our oaks, so we create an oak savanna. Well, oak savanna peaks, it has its peak level of attractiveness in the summertime when all the herbaceous and green broadleaf weeds are growing. So it's gonna peak in the summertime and then early fall when you have your mass crop of acorns are gonna be at their peak when they're dropping their acorns. By the time you get with an oak savanna into let's say early November, for sure mid-November in most parts of the country, your oak savanna's attractiveness and holding power is dropping off. It's important to understand that because your peak habitat for that type of for that type of environment or habitat is summer, early fall. Then you get into things like, even if it's not an oak savanna, maybe it's just acorn production, early fall. Then we get into things like, well, should I plant an apple orchard? An apple orchard is gonna peak in attractiveness as a food source in late summer, early fall. It's definitely not gonna peak in late November or December. Should I plant chestnut trees? Well, when do chestnut trees reach their peak attractiveness and holding power. Then there's this whole concept of just habitat improvement on your farm to begin with. Should I hinge cut trees? Should I create side cover and horizontal cover? Do I just do a hack and squirt? All these different questions you need to ask yourself, what kind of cover and security cover do I want? Do I want that cover? Do I want that security cover and woody brows to peak in September, maybe October? Do I want it to peak in November and December? Maybe I want it spread out for four months. Maybe for some hunters, they want 12 months of good habitat. But maybe for some hunters, based on their goals, 
they really only need to have their habitat peak for two or three weeks a year to improve their hunting and to reach their goals. I think before you do habitat work, before you plant food plots, before you decide whether or not I'm going to plant chestnut trees or maybe I'm going to plant pine trees, maybe I'm going to plant apple trees, what do, what do I want my habitat to look like? You really need to sit down with your hunting group or by yourself, if you're hunting by yourself, and, and say or ask the question, what are our goals? What do we want to get out of the time and money that we're going to put into our habitat improvements on our farm or on our property or maybe it's our lease? Once you've determined those goals, whatever they are, then you can prioritize your habitat work and your hunting related work so that you can meet your goals. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're just kind of grabbing stuff. You're just kind of watching YouTube videos or maybe you're watching some YouTube stars and they're saying, you know, do an oak savanna, plant apple trees, and you're kind of picking out things that they're doing. And it might be in fact that none of those are gonna help you reach your goals. You gotta understand a lot of people who put on YouTube videos and on the outdoor channel and TV, they might be different than what you are and their goals might be different than what you are. And to achieve their goals might require different, ha different habitat than what you have. For example, if you are, if you're watching somebody that owns, let's say a thousand acres in Southern Missouri, what they're able to do with their farm in food plots and habitat and even how they hunt their farm might very well work for having a thousand acres of private land in Southern Missouri or a thousand acres spread out over 15 different farms in Southern Iowa. Again, that might be very, very good, very good habitat, very good hunting techniques for a thousand acres spread out over 10 different farms in Southern Iowa. So you have to be careful when you're picking and choosing what things you wanna do for your farm, that it relates back to your goals and helping you re achieve your goals. Because a lot of times what other people are doing won't help you. Now let's, let's just get into some, some example and why some things work and some things don't based on your goals. Most hunters that I talk to that are getting into habitat improvements, or food plots, um, spending time and money, which is the resources you have on making their hunting grounds better, will define better as they wanna see older class bucks. So whether that's a year and a half or two and a half to maybe three, maybe it's two, two and three year olds to four or five, it's getting older class bucks or more older class bucks. I'm not saying you have to do that, but most hunters that are spending time and money, that's what they want. They want older class bucks to hunt. And they want or they want more of them i have yet to see a farm i'm not saying it's impossible but i have yet to see a farm that has a dozen five and six year old bucks running around that have small racks little bitty 50 inch racks because of their nutrition or their genetics that's not the limiting factor every single farm and every single hunter that i've ever talked to or farm that i've walked the limiting factor for seeing more big bucks or getting any big bucks is they're not getting to the age class that it requires to get to be a big buck even if it's two or three years old they're all getting shot when they're a year old even if you're trying to get them to four or five they're getting shot when they're two or three the limiting factor for me has always been age every hunter i've ever talked to it's always been age so then the next question you have to ask yourself is if the limiting factor for me and my hunting group to seeing more big bucks or seeing any big bucks is age, why are they getting shot when they're young? That's the next question you gotta ask yourself. And just about in every single case, it's because either the people on our farm aren't like-minded, but more than likely, it's our neighbors. There's somebody in our neighborhood or there's multiple farms in our neighborhood where the hunters are shooting bucks at a younger age class and we would like to let them get, let them get older. And again, I'm not buck shaming. I'm not trying to say that you can never kill a small buck or there's something wrong with that. I'm specifically talking about a hunter or a group of hunters that their goal is to shoot older class bucks or bigger bucks. The limiting factor is always they're getting shot when they're young. More times than not, just about every single time when this is happening, it's during a gun deer season. So when you talk about peak habitat, if your goal or if one of your goals is to see 
more mature bucks or to see any mature bucks to get them to grow to that etch, next age class. And the reason why they're not getting to the next age class is because they're getting shot during a gun deer season. Then what I would propose, what I would say is the best course of action you can take for your habitat plan and food plots and hunting strategy is to have your peak habitat, the attractiveness and holding power of your farm should peak running up to the gun season, during the gun season, and then tailing off. Or maybe it stays after the gun season. If you're not growing big bucks because they're getting shot during a gun deer season, but the deer are not on your farm where, you're, where you can protect them, where you're not shooting them during the gun deer season because you've created an oak savanna on your property that peaks in September, or you're planting green food plots that peak in September, or you're not gonna cut any white oaks or red oaks down to create really good thick security um, cover and thick horizontal cover and woody browse because you're targeting acorn production. Again, you're peaking in the early part of the archery season. That's why you can't protect them during the gun season. I hope you can see what I'm trying to get at here by peak habitat. So conversely, if you cut those oak trees down to create thick security cover, horizontal cover, holding power, that peaks during the gun deer season, and maybe you plant less green food plots and plant more soybeans, plant more corn, maybe you electric fence in the soybeans and the corn and release those food plots so that again, their attractiveness and peak holding power is during the gun deer season. And the third would be you hunt hard, but then maybe you drop off and don't hunt during that gun season. Now your farm in that neighborhood becomes the peak farm, the one farm that the deer know is going to have the best cover, the best security, the lowest hunting pressure, and the best food. And by doing that, you greatly increase the odds, it's never a guarantee, but you greatly increase the odds that you're going to attract and hold and thus protect those bucks during that gun season, which means you're going to be way better off at reaching your goal of getting those deer to the next age class so you can hunt bigger bucks. Most neighborhoods across the country, you need to target peak habitat during the gun deer season.